Hello everyone and welcome to yet another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from SimpliCode and today we will go through the examples of iterative control statements. We'll go through the examples of all the three loops present in JavaScript. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update from SimpliCode. So let's start this session without any further delay. So today we have three different problems for three separate loops, right? We'll go through each of the problems and we'll discuss the execution flow for each loop we'll go through. So let's start this session with our first problem statement. So the first problem statement goes like this. So here we have to write a program to check whether a number is prime or not. I hope you guys are aware of what prime numbers are, right? So a prime number is a positive number that is only divisible by one and itself. For example, 2, 3, 5 and we have 7 and 11. These are the first few prime numbers, right? If we take an example, let's say we are taking an example of 7. So 7 is a number which is divisible by 1 and 7 only. No other number can divide 7, right? So here in this code, we have to check whether a number is prime or not. So let me take you through the code. So here is the code to check whether a number is a prime number or not. Let me take you through this first. So we have a variable number and the value of variable number can be any random value like any number you want to check if the number is prime number or not you can give that value to the variable number. So here we have taken 83 next up we have a variable is prime whose value is a boolean value right it can be true for a prime number or it can be false for a non prime number. So we have used comments in this program to make it easier for you guys to understand. So here we have used the if statement to check if the number is 1 because we know that 1 is neither a prime number nor a composite number, right? So we have to check if the user enters the value 1 or if we are giving the value 1, we have to check for it. So if user enters the value 1, it will print this statement that 1 is neither prime nor composite. Here in else if we are checking if the value of number is greater than 1 or not. So if the value of number is greater than 1, the control will be shifted to for loop present inside the else if statement, right? Here you can see we have the for loop here. The control will be shifted to this for loop. So here you can see we have initialized a variable i and the initial value is set to 2. That's because any prime number is divisible by 1 as well, right? So it won't make any sense to include 1 here. We'll start from 2 and we'll check until the value of i becomes half of the value of number. So if we take an example of 10, we'll check until 5 because you know any number greater than 5 won't divide 10, right? It's practically not possible. So we'll check for number by 2 or we can say we'll check till 5 only and the value will be increased by 1 every time. Till now I hope you guys are aware of how to use for loop and why we are using for loop here. We can do the same program using while loop as well but to make it more clear how to use for loop, we are doing this program with the help of for loop. So then we have the i++ or we can say we have increased the value of i by 1 after every iteration until the value of i becomes half of the number. So the condition number percent i equals to equals to 0. So here is the main condition to check if the number is divisible by i or not. So the execution will be like if we are taking here a number 10, it will start from 2 and it will check if the remainder is 0 or not. So if the remainder is 0, then the value of is prime will be changed to false and it will come out of the loop. Next, it will check for the value of is prime if the value of is prime is true or not. Here you can see if the value of is prime is true, then it will print n. Or we can say then it will print that the number is a prime number. Else it will print that uh, the number is not a prime number if the value of is prime is false. For example, when we took the example of number as 10, so the value of is prime will be changed to false because you know 10 divides by 2 is equals to 0. Uh, or we can say the remainder will be 0. So the value of is prime will be changed to false and for false it will print number is not a prime number. So at last we will check if the number is less than 1. If the number entered by the user or any other number we have taken like if we take here minus 5. 
so it will print the number is not a prime number because by the usual definition of prime numbers any negative number cannot be a prime number that's a usual definition right so we have to keep this thing in mind and here in this else loop we'll print that if any negative number is entered we'll make sure that the program gives the output that the number is not a prime number so let's try to run this program and check the output let's save this program and the output says 83 is a prime number as 83 is not divisible by any number except 1 and 83 for example if we take here any number which is divisible by so let's say we are taking 75 save it now and see it says 75 is not a prime number okay here's a spelling mistake it says 75 is a not prime number so here we'll correct this is so we are done with it and save it now now it says 75 is not a prime number as 75 is divisible by numbers other than 1 and itself right it is divisible by 3 it is divisible by 5 15 and 25 as well all these numbers divide 75 basically so let's take a different value here let's say we are taking minus 7 let's change the value here as or we can take it as minus 75 let's save it now so it says the number is not a prime number or if we want to try for 1 as well let's take it as 1 and let's check the output now so it says 1 is neither prime nor composite number because we have given here the condition if number is equals to is equals to 1 then it will print that 1 is neither a prime nor a composite number you can try this program with the help of other loops as well so let's move on to the second problem statement but before that let me take you through the same program using the while loop so here you can see we have used the while loop for the same instead of for loop here you can see we have used while i less than a number by 2 and we have given the increment condition here and we have initialized the value of i at the start of the program so if we try to run this program it will give us the same output there will be no change in the output so we can use while loop as well so we'll use the while loop in other program let's move on to the second problem statement so in this example we'll learn to write a program in javascript to check whether a number is an armstrong number or not so we'll do this with the help of while loop let's have a look at how to implement this program before proceeding to the coding part let's have a look at what is an armstrong number so an armstrong number of three digits is an integer such that the sum of the cubes of its digits is equal to the number itself so for example 153 is an armstrong number since 1 into 1 into 1 it means the cube of the digit 1 plus the cube of 5 that is 5 into 5 into 5 which is equal to 125 and the cube of 3 which is 3 3's are 9 and 9 3's are 27 so it will go like 125 plus 27 plus 1 so which is equal to 153 so an armstrong number of 3 digits is an integer such that the sum of the cubes of its digits is equal to the number itself so here we have the code for the same this is the code to check whether the number is an armstrong number or not so here we have taken a variable and the value is 153 the value of the variable number is 153 right because we already know that 153 is an armstrong number there are a few more numbers like 371 is also an armstrong number next up we have taken a variable sum and the initial value of sum is 0 we have used the variable sum to store the value of the cubes and next up we have a temporary variable so that we can break a three digit number and we need the number after all this all this program all this loops and all we'll need the number we'll need the original number to compare it with the sum of the cubes which will be hold in sum so but we need to break the number as well right so we need a temporary variable to break it here we use the while loop and the loop will run until the value of variable temp is greater than 0 so the initial value of temp will be 153 here in this particular case the initial value will be 153 and the loop will run until the value of 153 is greater than 0 
Next up, we have a variable remainder that stores the last digit's value as we are dividing 153 by 10. So the remainder here will be 3. So the value saved at variable remainder will be 3 for the first time. Then what will happen with we are updating the value of sum and the new value of sum will be 0 plus 3 into 3 into 3. So 3 3's are 9 and 9 3's are 27. So the updated value of sum will be 27. Next up we are removing the last digit from the number. So for example we have here 153 and if we divide 153 by 10 the answer will be 15.3. That's why we are using here percent because what percent will do it will convert the float value into an integer. So if we try to perform a simple divide in JavaScript like if we try to divide 153 by 10 it will give us 15.3 it will give us a float value but we want an integer value right so percent will change this value to the nearest integer so 15.3 the nearest integer will be 15 so the new value of temp will be 15 then again this loop will be executed and for this time the variable remainder will hold the value of 15 modulus 10 and the remainder will be 5 right so the new value of remainder is 5 and the value of sum is 27 plus 5 into 5 into 5 which is 27 plus 125 right so the new value of sum will be 152 and then again it will go to the temp and it will divide 15 by 10 and it will change the value to an integer so 1.5 will be changed to 1 and next up the final value of temp is 1 which is greater than 0 right so it will divide 10 by 1 and the remainder will be 1 so next up it will add 152 plus 1 into 1 into 1 that is 153 right and then it will divide 1 by 10 using the percent but this time the value will be 0 because there is no remainder right next up we'll compare the value of the sum and the number variable so the sum variable here it is holding the value as 153 we break this number into three different parts then we took the cube of these three number and added them so the final value of the variable sum is 153 and the initial value of number or we can say the value we gave to the variable number is 153 so right it will print here that 153 is an armstrong number or if we use any other number instead of 153 let's suppose we are using 121 so it will print 121 is not an armstrong number let's check out the output once let's save it and see the output here is 153 is an armstrong number so if we change the value of 153 to 121 so let's check the output now it says 121 is not an armstrong number why because if we take the cube of each of the digit and we'll add them suppose the answer here will be 10 because the cube of 1 is 1 and the cube of 2 is 8 and the cube of the final one is 1 so 8 plus 1 plus 1 is equals to 10 so that's why 1 to 1 is not an armstrong number let's move on to our last problem statement where we'll use the do while loop to find the factorial of a number so here is the problem statement where we'll have to write a program to find the factorial of a number. So factorial of an integer is the product of an integer and all the integers below it or we can say before it till 1. So if we take an example of 5. So the factorial of 5 will be it will multiply each number before it. If we take 5 the factorial will be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 or if we don't include 1 that's totally fine so this program is pretty simple as compared to the previous two we did so this is a small one too let me take you through this so here we have the program and here we have three variables right we have a variable i which is initialized as 1 then we have a variable n which is 5 and then we have a variable f whose value is 1 f is for factorial and n is for number we want to check the factorial of and i is for checking the condition so here what we will do we'll use a loop where if we for example if we are taking 5 then the loop will go from 
वन इंटू टू इंटू थ्री इंटू फोर इंटू फाइव फ्रॉम वन टू दैट नंबर इट्स नॉट लाइक इफ वी आर यूजिंग फ्रॉम फाइव टूवर्ड्स वन बट वी आर गोइंग फ्रॉम वन टूवर्ड्स फाइव द आंसर विल बी सेम राइट बिकॉज वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग ऑल द नंबर्स इन बोथ द केसेज so here we took five as the number next up we have a variable f and the value of f is also one as you know so here we are using the do while loop for the first iteration it will perform this so the value of f for the first iteration will be f equals to f into i which means f equals to one into one which is one so the value of i will be increased and it will become two and now it will check for while Two is less than equals to n. Yes, two is less than n. So it will again go up and it will update the value of f, and the new value of of f will be one into two. That is two. Then again the value will be increased and it will become three, and then it will change the value of f as well. If it will become six and the value of i will become four, then it will check if four is less than five. Yes, four is less than five. and then it will multiply 4 with 6 because the value of f was 6 right so 4 into 6 it will become 24 and then finally the value of i will be 5 and it will check if the value of i is less than or equals to 5 right while i is less than equals to 5 yes that's true because now 5 is equals to 5 and it will again execute the loop and the value of f will be 24 into 5 which is 120 and then again the value of i will be increased now it will become 6 which is greater than 5 so it will come out of the loop and it will print the factorial of a number so let's save this program so the factorial of 5 is 120 because see here we have used the factorial of n n is 5 and the factorial is 120 so if we try to give any other number here other than 5 let's say we are using here 10 save it it says the factorial is 362880 or it's 36828800 so if you try to multiply 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 so on till 2 or we can say 1 the answer will be this you can check it you can google it or you can go through it in your calculator So hope you guys got it. With this, we are done with loops in JavaScript. We are left with the foreign loop, which we will discuss after going through arrays and objects. So don't worry about it. That's all for this video, guys. See you in the next one, where we'll go through functions in JavaScript. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up, comment your doubts below, and subscribe to Simply Code to never miss an update. Thank you.